Welcome to the afternoon of Anzac Day 2015. This Anzac Day is a particularly special one, as I'm sure you know. It's the centenary uh, since our Anzacs landed on the shores of Gallipoli. On that day, a hundred years ago, we lost 2,000 men. No, that's not the amount that we lost in the whole Gallipoli campaign or in the whole of World War I. <clears throat> that's just one day. I can't even imagine one day losing 2,000 people. That's about three high schools worth, all dead. <sighs> it would have been horrific. I can't even imagine what was going through the minds of the soldiers as they rode towards those shores and had men in their boats dying around them. Um, you know, I wonder often what would have kept them keeping on rowing, rowing towards the danger. Clearly they felt that our country was something worth fighting for, that their families, freedoms and values were worth protecting. And for that I am truly grateful because I just love Australia and I really love um, the values that we still hold from the Anzacs. The spirit of them which has lived on of bravery, courage, um, strong willpowers, humour and mateship. I've spent some time this week researching my family and I knew that my great-grandfather had served at Gallipoli and he was lucky enough to return from Gallipoli. But we also came across some medals of another family member who um, had served and we didn't actually realise it till my mum found them. So those letters and diaries and medals belonged to a man called Arthur Sidney de Steptoe. And he was the brother of my great-grandmother and Arthur was 23 when he went to Gallipoli. He <coughs> signed up in Rose Hill, Sydney. Uh, he was a builder carpenter. He was tall, dark hair, dark eyes, dark complexion, and um, was married to a lady called Vera, and they had a three-year-old son. Uh, the war broke out in September 1914, and uh, soon after the 13th Battalion was formed. That was the battalion which Arthur joined and they trained for a little while in Egypt before going to Gallipoli. It appeared that Arthur went over with some friends of his, one of them being Peter. Um, I've not yet been able to track down um, how he knew Peter. So we have a letter from Peter which is actually to Vera. It's unfortunately to let her know that Arthur had died at war. He died Gallipoli, it wasn't um, in the upper trenches, it sounds like it was actually down in the respite area that they had at the bottom of the hill. He died on the 29th of May 1915. Peter writes to Vera and he tells her that only half an hour before Arthur's death he'd been speaking to Arthur and Arthur was saying how happy he was to have received a photo of his son and wife. It would have been nice to talk to somebody who was from home and who would know Vera and understand, you know, how much Arthur would have missed her and his son. It writes that the night before uh, it had been really, really heavy and um, and they'd lost a lot of their friends. So no doubt um, there would have been a heavy heart on Arthur after a month at war and the night before losing his friends and um, he was probably hungry and very tired. Half an hour later Peter writes that he saw Arthur with a tin of biscuits on his shoulders and a pipe in his mouth and that's when he was shot dead. He says death was instantaneous and unfortunately I haven't yet been able to come across any medical documents if any to say whether that was true or not. Sometimes I wonder whether perhaps he said that to make Vera feel good. Um, you can read the letter and you can sort of get a tone of the nice things that he's put in there for Vera to treasure. It's really nice that he had the privilege, I suppose, of being able to inform Vera rather than just a formal letter from a soldier that she had nothing to do with. I'm sure that that would have meant 
something to her. What really hits home for me is um, thinking of Vera as an army wife. Um, you know, she would have just been a shocked young girl. She was uh, 22, so um, a few years younger than myself, but had been married about the same time. Um, she had a three-year-old son, and she didn't have a father. Her father died when she was 14, four years before she got married. And she, I can't even put into words how she would have felt because I can only imagine um, she didn't receive his belongings for a year um, after he died and that in itself would have been tough enough. Imagine a year after someone dies receiving all their things and those kind of formal processes didn't finish for about five years, you know, informing her about the particulars of his grave and uh, where he was laid in Anzac Cove. He's, um, currently resting at the Shrapnel Cemetery in Anzac Cove and one day I really hope to go and visit him. I suppose it somewhat hits close to home now because we are this generation's Anzacs and we have plenty of friends that are <coughs> in the army and uh, friends with Reese who is also in the army, that's my husband. Um, and it just breaks my heart to think of this happening to them or men like them and their partners. So I suppose what we take from Anzac Day is not a glorification of war because Anzac, um, the Anzac battle at Gallipoli was a failure as we know, but what we take from it is um, stories of their courage and their sacrifice and um, that's something that I think that we should all really aspire to particularly within our own communities because if we're doing things to help others in our own communities and in our families around us then we can continue to move that spirit forward within Australia and keep Australia strong. Uh, we want to think actively about how we are using our time now to make sure that we are showing our children and those around us what we value. Um, and to show them that there were men who fought for what we value and for our freedom and that is something that's worth um, worth standing up for and yeah, worth continuing. It's a, um, your Anzac Day has been really good and if you've been up since 3 o'clock like me then uh, you'll get some good rest this afternoon. Um, if you're not going out with all the festivities tonight, um, particularly for those who are in the army, uh, enjoy your time out if you're going out tonight and have a lovely afternoon.